Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for our first webinar in partnership with Shared Ownership Week. I'm Jade Turnstill from Shared to Buy, who are the country's leading property portal specialising in shared ownership homes, and I'll be hosting today's session alongside representatives from both L&Q and Peabody, who I'll be passing over to shortly. Just before we get going though, I wanted to show you this short video about Shared Ownership Week, which kicks off today and gives you a little bit more information about what to expect over the coming week. If you're interested in finding out more about Shared Ownership Week, please visit sharedownershipweek.co.uk, where you can register to attend a number of other events taking place over the next week, including webinars, podcasts, and a live Q&A session with housing experts taking place next Wednesday. Now, to get things started, I'll soon be joined today by Ashton Evely from l and and Stephen Midgley and Lawrence Main from Peabody, who are going to talk you through the part by part rent scheme and its eligibility criteria. However, just before I pass over to our guest speakers, I wanted to run through some quick housekeeping with you all. Basically, Ashton, Stephen and Lawrence are going to do their presentations for us before opening up to a live Q&A session at the end, which will last for around 10 minutes. So if you have any questions for our experts, feel free to pop them in the chat tool to the right hand side of your screen. You'll see that there's a little icon with some speech bubbles and we'll get through as many as we can at the end of the session. Also on the right hand side, it's worth keeping an eye on the offers and files tabs as we'll have some links and downloadable content there for you, which you can download and um, click through to throughout the rest of the session. I also just wanted to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and shared with you all afterwards. So don't worry if you happen to miss any of the important information along the way. We'll make sure that you have access to the recording afterwards. So that's it for me for now. I'll be back at the end of the presentations for the Q&A session. But in the meantime, I'll pass you over to Ashton from l and Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ashton. I oversee the sales in the eastern region of the l and Counties Division. I cover the Essex, Cambridge and Bedfordshire and anywhere in between those areas. Um, and today I'm going to talk you through exactly what shared ownership is and how it works, hopefully to give you a clear understanding um, of a little, boy, inform little bit more information on how it works. So shared ownership is a scheme that's been set up by the government whereby you buy a part of the property, which we call a share, and you pay a subsidised rent on the remainder of that property. Buying part of the property allows you to have a lower deposit and a more realistic income. This is because the deposit required is based on the share that you're purchasing rather than on the full market value. This makes it considerably more affordable than buying on the open market. Then the rest of the share amount will be what you take a mortgage on. So you have a lower deposit and then you take a mortgage of the remainder of your share. Typically, when you first buy a shared ownership home, um, you will buy a minimum of 25% and a maximum of 75%, so whichever is affordable for you. The rent that's payable to the housing association on the unowned share is normally no, no more than 2.75%. And I have a short example for you here, just to give you a little bit more information on what kind of deposits would be required and the share values. So, as you can see, if a property has a full market value of 400,000, as shown here, your 25% share would equate to 100,000, meaning that a 10% deposit on that, which is the minimum requirement for most mortgage lenders, um, would be 10,000 pounds, and you would be able to take a mortgage on the remainder of the amount, which would be just 90,000 pounds. <clears throat> Many people that buy a shared ownership home always wonder that if their financial circumstances may change, whether they would be able to increase their share and buy more into the property. Simple answer to this is yes. Um, your journey with shared ownership doesn't just end with your first purchase. Um, we call it staircasing. So you can staircase up to three times and you have to buy minimum shares at each point, basically, which are in increments of 
By increasing the share, the rent obviously on the share that you don't own does decrease, meaning that once you own 100% of your property, so you own the property outright, you no longer have to pay rent on the share which you don't own. <clears throat> Here's a short video, guys, for you to show you some happy residents that have purchased a shared ownership home with LNQ. If it wasn't for shared ownership, I wouldn't be owning my own property right now because I realised on the open market, it would have been out of reach. When I got the keys to my property, it was the best feeling. Shared ownership was great because I could get something new and incredibly attractive from my point of view as an architect. I love having an open kitchen. It's bright and airy. It was fantastic when I was actually able to move in and bring all my stuff into one place. My favourite thing about my home, I think, is this living space because you get a nice view of everything that goes on. The location of the property was an absolute bonus. I'm a 10 minute train ride from work, but I'm also very close to the countryside and the city. Been here four years now. I enjoy the community. It's something I never had in London before. When you're renting a flat, how often do you meet your neighbours? But here we know everyone. Shared ownership with LNQ has given me a fantastic foundation to build my future on. Now I have a stable base in London and it's given me a place where I can feel like I'm at home. LNQ has been really good. I've been really happy with the way they interacted with us. The buying process was incredibly simple. So well explained and couldn't have been any better. If you are considering shared ownership, I would say go for it. It's been an incredible experience and every day is a happy day. Nice little video for you guys there. Um, so a little bit more about LNQ. Um, we have nearly 60 years experience in affordable housing. Um, therefore, we aim to deliver a great service to every customer every time. Um, and we're always looking for opportunities to improve ourselves, obviously. Um, so because our social purpose is at the core of everything that we do, that means that we reinvest all of our money that we make into homes and services um, and by doing this we create better places to live um, and that's by delivering quality homes that obviously people can afford. Um, I have a couple of developments to show you, one of which comes from our London region and they both feature shared ownership properties and the second is from our campus region. Here we have the Regency Heights development. Um, this is a development, as I said, within our London region, and it offers one and two bedroom apartments available for shared ownership. It stands in the footprint of the former Guinness factory, and it offers high quality apartment living, which is actually surrounded by greenery. Um, the development itself is part of the largest regeneration scheme uh, since the Olympic Park in Stratford was built. Um, overall, it will be a collection of 807 homes and it's a new district being built within West London and at the end of the development, at the end of the regeneration, it will be around 25,000 homes. Prices at Regency Heights start from about 87,500 and that will gain you a 25% share of a one-bedroom apartment. Next, I'm going to show you the Darwin Green development at Cambridge. Uh, this is a collection of two and three bedroom houses, all available for shared ownership. The Darwin Green development is around a metre, sorry, a mile and a half from the centre of Cambridge itself, which is an easy 15 minute cycle away from Cambridge and the train station in Cambridge. From Cambridge, you can reach King Cross in around 50 minutes, so making it commutable distance to and from London. The development itself offers high quality homes, as I mentioned, for shared ownership. This features kitchens with integrated appliances, bright living spaces, and also each home has its own private garden. Prices at Darwin Green start from £100,000, and that will get you a 25% share of a two bedroom home. 
that's all from me now, guys. I'm going to hand you over to Lawrence and Stephen from Peabody, and they will talk you through a little bit more about the eligibility criteria of shared ownership and a little bit more about Peabody themselves. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Lawrence Main. I'm a regional sales manager with Peabody, and I've been joined by Stephen Midgley, who is the other regional sales manager with Peabody. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about eligibility and how you buy a shared ownership home. And Stephen will take you through one of our popular developments in East London. So shared ownership, it really is best suited to people who have some money saved, but not enough to buy 100% of a home. The eligibility for buying through a shared, the shared ownership scheme can vary depending on the scheme, where you live and what borough you live in. So who is eligible for shared ownership? Well, you've got to be aged 18 or older. Your annual household income, if buying in London, must be less than 90,000 and 80,000 if you're outside of London. You will normally be a first time buyer or be in the process of selling your current home. And you must be able to show that you're not in rent or mortgage arrears. You must be able to demonstrate you have a good credit history and can afford the costs and regular payments involved in buying your home. First of all, though, you want to make sure you can afford your dream home. So going through your finances is really important. And having an, afford an affordability check done with a mortgage advisor is crucial when buying a shared ownership home. The affordability checks are free and only take a short time to do. They also don't leave a scar on your credit score. You'll be able to refine your property search when you know how much you can borrow and understand your mortgage options and affordability gives you a better idea of where and what you can afford in London or outside of London. So how do we prioritise people for shared ownership properties? Because it seems that we're normally always oversubscribed. <clears throat> so there are several rules we have to follow. So existing social tenants, either living with a council or a housing association, are prioritised at the top of the tree. The idea behind this is to release, release a home to people that possibly need it more in the borough that the shared ownership properties are in. And obviously, we put military personnel at the top of the tree as well. It's coming back from overseas or posted wherever. When they return into their hometowns, will often find it difficult to join the housing market immediately without having the help of shared ownership. And applicants who are registered on the local authorities housing waiting list and who are in the local priority group will be considered ahead of other people as well. But our biggest buyers are always first time buyers. And after all of these individual property groups have been considered, applications will then be prioritised based on people who live in work within the same borough of the home they wish to buy. And in some cases, the local authority as part of their agreement with us will insist on approving their nominations. So they will always look for people that live and work in the borough, but that is borough dependent. So best to ask us when you see a scheme come live. And people on the lowest income we consider before anybody else, just because you can afford it more, doesn't mean that you'll be given first choice of it. If somebody earns less, or they're in a position that they can afford it, then they will be considered before other people. So now I'm handing over to Stephen, who's gonna tell you a bit more about our scheme and why you should buy a shared ownership home. Hello, I'm Stephen Mitchley, Regional Sales Manager at Peabody. Um, thanks, Lawrence. Um, so just a little bit about why you should choose to buy your home with Peabody. Our, our schemes are, you know, are great, great quality homes in and across London and South East, and, and they're built, you know, to such high quality in places where, where people want to want to live. Um, we design, build and maintain award winning, winning homes and neighbourhoods, which people are proud to live in. A lot goes into into the place making, we think about, you know, we, we've learned from our mistakes, but we think about how we move forward and how we improve what our offer is to our residents. We're really proud of that. And um, for the second year in a row, we've achieved a gold award for customer satisfaction. And that's again, something as a team, we're really proud of. And that's something that our customers have voted for. So again, it means a lot to us to have achieved that two years in a row. 
I'm going to now give you a, a shameless plug for one of my schemes, which I love. Um, it's a scheme called Motion over in Leebridge Road, which is in the borough of Waltham Forest. It's a, a mixed tenure scheme. And as you can see, architecturally, it's really interesting. It's not your run of a mill development. It's really beautiful to look at. It's absolutely stunning. In here, you've got great apartments with really great space, all got balconies. They've all got amazing outdoor space. There's a, a great roof terrace which is communal up on top of one of the blocks which is is really lovely um so yeah really 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 good option and great prices as you can see so for a one bed we've got starting price of 112 500 um and the flats are built that we're just launching the, the tower which is a 17 story tower we're going to be there next week if you want to come down and have a look we've got appointments left so we can certainly see you and show you around um, and we're selling to, to a lot of people who live locally, but also people moving from from maybe more expensive areas close by that still want good connectivity. So nearby Stratford, um, we've certainly seen a lot of people coming here. So it's people who are, you know, looking for a good value for money, looking for the next property hotspot where they're going to they're going to get a bit of growth for their investment. Um, transport wise, it's great. You can go from Leebridge Station. You can get down to Stratford in six minutes. So there's a train every 15 minutes, takes you six minutes to Stratford, where you can jump on whatever line you want to get into central London. Alternatively, you can stay on the line and get into Liverpool Street, it takes about 27 minutes. So really well connected, really great part of the city. And also lots of people with bikes, that seems to be really key here. So you've got lots of these um, cycle super highways nearby, the Holland route, I think it's called, which is really great. So. You should definitely come and have a look at this if, you, if you're thinking about shared ownership. Um, this is one of our buyers at Motion, a lady called Josephine. I'm going to um, let you have a look at what she's got to say, I hope. When I first moved to London, I was a cyclist from day one. I cycle to work, come rain or shine. I've started hairdressing before I even left school. It's such a rarity, I think you'll find many people that will love their job and love going into their workplace every day, but I actually do. I have shared for eight years and I was ready for a change and I think it was buying my own place and living on my own finally. Buying at Motion, shared ownership was a 35% share and it was just something that was doable for me being able to put a deposit down and be able to finally get onto the property ladder is amazing. When I looked at the property at Motion, I was amazed at the size. There's enough room in here if I was to have to share with a partner. I mean, the wardrobe space is amazing. When I moved, I did have a little bit of furniture, but I wanted a lot of new furniture as well, especially with it being a new build. I wanted to complement that. I love cooking as well, so having like a really nice open plan living room and kitchen is really nice. I love using that space. It's so nice having the balcony and just having that space to go have a coffee in the mornings or even come back and sit out there and have dinner on my balcony at night. It's got a very like holiday feel to it. I think a lot of people have noticed quite the difference in me since I've moved and how more chilled out I am. One of my friends actually is my neighbour and I actually recommended Motion to her. People were great to be able to deal with. Any problems, I could just always email or phone Brogan and she could help me. There was always the worry to part way with the money that I'd spent so long saving, but now it's invested in something, I'm definitely happy. I love it all. Great. So as as Josephine says, why wouldn't you want to live there? Um, again, we're open this weekend and, and next weekend. If you want to um, want to come and view, contact us. We've got various ways of contacting us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or call our, call our main office. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. That was brilliant. So I'm going to join you now uh, for the Q&A section. But I just wanted to say thank you, first of all, to all of our amazing speakers. I think that was really informative. I have been keeping an eye on the uh, chat bar 
throughout the presentation and can already spot that you've answered a lot of the questions that kind of came in at the very start. So thank you for that. But without further ado, we'll jump straight into it. So we'll start with one that we actually get all the time it's shared by ourselves. Uh, Ashton, this is probably one you could uh, elaborate on for us. But someone has asked, do I have to share my home with strangers? This is a very common question, as you say. Um, people hear the word shared ownership and they automatically think that they will be sharing their property. The simple answer to that is no, your property is your home. Um, just because you're purchasing the share of that property, you do not have to share with another family or another person. Yeah, it's a very common misconception, like you say, and I think it's that that word shared, but it's because you're sharing ownership with the housing association. So exactly like Ashton said, right. we're not going to force you to live with anyone. <laughs> you can be, we have so many case studies that are solo buyers, like Josephine, many people buy on their own because it is that bit more affordable, uh, especially on the deposit side of things. So uh, yeah, open to all kinds of buyers. Uh, if we go to Stephen for this one, because actually we've seen quite a few questions um, regarding shared ownership and help to buy. So basically, what's the difference between the schemes and can they be used in conjunction with one another? So, Stephen, would you? Well, I mean, we we have a number of schemes where you can where you can utilize either of those two options. So they're both a route to purchase, really. So we've got you know help to buy or shared ownership, and and probably the main difference is your deposit level. So on a on a scheme I've got in Wembley, if you were to to purchase on shared ownership, you'd buy a twenty five percent share. You'd be looking at having about a nine thousand pound deposit. You would then t take your seventy five percent share, which you would pay. You you pay your rent on, you pay your mortgage, so you have an outgoing of about you know fourteen hundred pounds, fifteen hundred pounds, you know approximately. But then you could opt go, opt for your help to buy option, where you'd need a bit bigger deposit. You'd need probably twenty twenty percent at about sorry not twenty percent about nineteen thousand um, pounds, and then you would you'd have your interest free loan from the government for the first five years. So I think both options is really appealing. It depends on where you are. Um, you know, what deposit you've got available to you and, and your salary level. But yeah, both are, are great options, just depending on the individual circumstances. Yeah, that's really good. And I think um, some of the confusion there is because uh, it's obviously shared ownership is partly called helped by shared ownership, but they are two completely different schemes. And Absolutely. as Stephen mentioned, often developments will offer both, but you can't actually use them in conjunction with one another because, as the guys have explained, shared ownership is part by part rent, but actually, the help to buy uh, scheme is an equity loan. So outside of London, the government will give you a 20% loan towards your property. Um, outside of London, inside of London is up to 40%. So they are very different schemes, even though they're both kind of affordable home ownership and trying to get people onto the property ladder. So in answer to those questions, no, you can't use them together, but it's all about figuring out what works best for you. Uh, we'll go back to Ashton. So interesting question. Why are there minimum and maximum income requirements in place for shared ownership homes? OK, this is again a, a commonly asked question. So great question. Um, the, the reason why those those um, are in place is basically so that it remains affordable in line with applicants income so with shared ownership the reason why the minimum income is in place is so that your outgoings can't exceed a certain amount of your income if you like so um we have that minimum income to make sure that buying a home and the monthly cost would be affordable to you um now with regards to the maximum income uh, this is in place to ensure that the affordable homes are sold to people that need them um, and those that aren't eligible to get a huge mortgage out on the open market. Um, so the maximum income allows allows people sort of below that, if you like, to, to, to be able to purchase a home on shared ownership rather than um, going to people who can afford to purchase on the open market with a larger income. That's perfect. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, we'll go over to Lawrence now. We've had a good question, which is if I see a home I like on the open market, <clears throat> sorry, can I arrange to buy that property through shared ownership? <clears throat> well, there are some um, housing associations that will do this and um, they will help you fund and buy the share that they're going to hold. Unfortunately, it's not something that Peabody does any uh, anymore. Um, I had, did do one last year, which was a hold property for a chap who wanted to live out in Essex. Um, hold is a scheme for people with long term disability, um, but it's very rare. Normally we deal with only new build properties. 
That's fantastic. Um, I can open this one up to anyone. We've had a couple of people actually asking, what happens if I buy a new, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. What happens if I buy a brand new home and something goes wrong with it? So in the regards to kind of repairs and maintenance. Well, for your first year or sometimes two years, you, you have what is called a defects liability period. Um, and that basically means that you ring the company or developer that built it, they give you a hotline and they will come out and sort out the problem that you've got obviously if it, obviously if it's damaged of course yourself it will be down to you to fix that what i would add to that um is that that defects warranty period doesn't always start from the day you move in it starts from the day that the um housing association took pc so um practical completion of the building so that might have been three months six months before you purchase so just be mindful of that 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 period is ticking and it doesn't start from the day that you move in unless of course you move in on day one of practical completion which we'd all love we'd all love you to do that yeah that's really good to know though actually that it starts potentially before you move in i guess yep. you're more likely to um start on day one if you're potentially buying like an off-plan property which for people that are listening and don't necessarily know off-plan is when you purchase the property in advance of it being finished and like, before it's built basically which um is an option uh, as well as that uh, this kind of leads on to my next question which i'll chuck over to ashton which is is shared ownership only available on apartments and is it only available on new builds so it'd be good if you can talk us through the types of properties that are available of course. Um, so in answer to the first part of that question, no, um, it's not just available on apartments. As I mentioned during um, my little speech there, um, in the counties region, we have many houses and family sized properties. And I believe in London as well, they are starting to build larger properties to cater for families that want to stay within London. Um, so not just available on apartments, there will be some developments that have houses as well. In regards to the question on whether shared ownership is only available on new builds, the answer is no. Um, we do have lots of resale properties. Many housing associations have resale properties whereby people have bought those properties on shared ownership in the first instance um, and they're now, they're, they are then looking to move on. So whether it be out of the area or into a different property, in which case they will sell their property um, they come back to the housing association that they bought from in the first instance and they will sell their shared ownership property. So it will be sometimes you have a shared ownership property that that may only be a year or two old. Other times there may be properties that may can be up to sort of 10, 15 years old. So um, there are resale properties available on the market as well. That's fantastic. and Really full of information. there, And I think it's just good for people to know because there is this common misconception that Shared ownership is only available on studio and one beds, new builds, kind mm. of skirts of London, that sort of thing. But actually, it's nationwide, it's all across the country. Like you mentioned, there's apartments and houses, there's new build res resale. But then also, depending on what you're looking for, do some research into it because there's schemes such as older persons' shared ownership mm. on specific developments across the country. So if you're over the age of 55, you can, in a lot of cases, buy through shared ownership, but there's also that alternate version of it. So it's just always worth doing your research in those kind of early stages and see if you can fine tune exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, and as I mentioned, a lot of developers and housing associations now recognise that people want to stay in London, but they also want to grow their families. So they are starting to build those larger homes in London and out of London, which is great news. Perfect. Thanks so much, Ashton. Uh, so another interesting question. Can I choose what percentage I buy or does the housing association decide this for me? So, Lawrence, would you mind taking this one? Right. Uh, you can't actually choose the percentage you buy. The way it's done is that you'll have your affordability assessment done. Then you'll have a, <clears throat> a full check by the financial advisor that you're using. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and they will inform you the maximum you must buy at. And so it'll be a case of if they've been offered at 25 percent, but the financial advisor comes back and says, well, you can afford up to 45 percent. Invariably, you will have to buy at that figure. That's brilliant. Thank you. And for anyone listening, um, what they'll often see as well is that a property is available at 25 percent minimum and assume that they can, even if they can afford more, so like you said, um, that they can just buy that. But you do have to buy the higher percentage. But equally, not all shared ownership homes are set at 25 percent minimum. Sometimes you'll see 35, 40, depending on, I guess, local property prices, the kind of development, the amount 
looking at property listings and trying to kind of decide what's best for you, always worth keeping an eye out for that. So a lot of it is minimum 25%, but that can vary. So it's always important to keep an eye out. Yeah. Uh, we've had a question. So, Stephen, I'll chuck this one for you. The presentation mentioned first time buyers in the UK, but what if I own another home abroad? Would I still be eligible? You you wouldn't be eligible. So basically, the capital funding guides, you know, the guidance we have is that you can't own a property anywhere, UK or abroad. Um, so if you had that property, you would need to sell that. You would need to provide proof that you have sold that prior to exchanging on your, your new shared ownership home. Fantastic. So I've just had a look at the time. We've got time for a couple more questions, which we'll try and power through for you guys. Um, let's have a look here. So I'll open this up to any of you who want to uh, chime in and answer. If I own a shared ownership property, can my partner move in with me further down the line? Yeah, absolutely. We wouldn't stop anybody in that. And in fact, they can become um, a joint owner in that property, um, provided <coughs> you can still fit within the affordability criteria. And that's a, a really great opportunity, I think, for you to staircase to own more of your own home. Mm. So if there's two of you with with a bigger salary coming in, you know, it's a great a great opportunity for you to to explore that option. You know, increase increase the share you you own um, and reduce the amount of rent you're paying. So yeah, that's a, a really great thing, I think. Yeah, agreed. That's fantastic. Uh, we've had uh, this come through a couple of times, actually. So if I, if a single person is buying, are there restrictions on the amount of bedrooms you can purchase? For example, I'm a sole buyer, but can I purchase a two or three bedroom property? That goes back a little bit to what Lawrence was saying about allocation and about prioritisation. I think if you've got a, a scheme where you have a, you know, a family with with one or two children who apply for it, and you have a single person, you there will be an allocation to say they have a greater housing need because they're a family; they need the bedrooms. And, and that's how we tend to allocate, to be honest, and prioritise people. Although, if we have a scheme and nobody is going for the larger properties and you can afford it, then yes, you could buy a two or three bed if you're on your own. Yeah, and the same as if you have a huge development with lots of larger properties, not so much they're not selling. <laughs> um, but if if you have a lot of larger properties, then um, yeah, like, like the guys say, there's the opportunity to purchase a bigger property. That's fantastic. That's all really informative. And I think that the crux of any of these is if you're unsure, talk to the housing provider. Whether you're in the very early stages or you're already a resident living in there, just you can always speak to your housing provider and they'll give you uh, an honest and open answer about, you know, repairs and whatever else. And, and, and I think I think for me, I, I think that, you know, all of all of us are, as housing providers have so many schemes mm -hmm. available and so many open days available. I'd really say if I was a, a, a first time buyer, I'd get out there and and go and see these people. So we've got some great salespeople on our schemes, you know, who really know the product, really know what they're selling, and they're more than happy to talk to people. And I think that's how you'll get a feel of, you know, where you want to live, who you want to buy from, all of those things. Um, yeah, I really would, would advise, that would be the best advice, really. I do agree. That's the ultimate research is actually yeah, going to multiple absolutely. and going, I like this, I don't like this, I want this. So that's a really good yeah. point. Uh, we'll end on this question. So it's kind of a two parter. Firstly, am I allowed pets in a shared ownership home? But then also, if I don't have a pet, but I say look after a small dog twice a week, is that allowed? So that's quite an interesting um, way up there. Ashton, would you like to take this one for us? Um, yeah, so it's dependent on the lease. So generally with pets, you will need to, um, the, the, the first rule would be no, unfortunately, you wouldn't be allowed a pet. Um, however, it's, if it's a small pet that you're looking after once or twice a week, you may be able to gain um, authorization from the housing association that you're with in order to do that. Um, but like I say, it's always worth checking, like, like Stephen mentioned, it's worth asking the sales associate that you're dealing with because each scheme will have their own um, rules and regulations on that, if you like. So again, it may be different if you're in a house to if you're in an apartment. Um, so that the, the, the best thing is to find the development where you wish to live or a couple of developments and speak with the sales associates because they will know exactly what their rules and regulations are on each of their properties yeah just to turn that on its head a little bit last year peabody decided that if we were the freeholders of of the development you could have up to two dogs now quite often though we are only the section 106 partners which means that we look after the affordable units on a particular site 
and we have to follow what's in the head list there. So if the developer is saying no pets, then we have to go along with that. But if we are the freeholders, if Peabody have owned the land, built out the units, then you can have up to two dogs. So again, worth checking with, with your sales executive mm. on site and it will differ from, from each, each provider, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we have any current shared owners watching, if you're unsure, the first thing to do would be to actually just check the terms of your lease, and if not, speak to your housing provider, because exactly like Ashton said, it can incredibly vary depending on, say, if you're in a house or an apartment, because if you're on a sixth floor uh, studio flat or one bed, you, it's, it's unlikely you'll be allowed to have a, a Labrador or an Alsatian up there with you. Whereas actually, if you're in a house with a garden, that potentially could be less of an issue. So it's all about just checking with your housing provider, um, before you make that decision or if you're already in there while you're a resident. So perfect. I think you've answered loads of questions for us. So I'm I'm sorry to cut you off. We've had so many questions for you. Really appreciate it. Um, but what I will do is first, I want to say a massive thank you to our free speakers. You've done a really fantastic job and it's been really informative. I also want to thank everyone in the audience who's watched and asked questions. I hope you found the session useful and we really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, you've heard a, about a couple of developments available from Peabody and LNQ today, but if you're interested in finding out more about the shared ownership, <coughs> you can visit sharedbuy.com where we have thousands of properties listed across the country. If you'd like to find out more about Shared Ownership Week and the other events coming up, please visit sharedownershipweek.co.uk. So the uh, URL is on the screen there for you. And for those of you who found today's webinar helpful, if you have any other questions, we'll also be hosting another webinar at 5 p.m. on Monday, all about the costs of buying a shared ownership home and a third session on Tuesday dedicated to mortgage and legal advice. So it'd be great to have you along for those as well. But in the meantime, thank you again to our viewers and to our lovely speakers uh, for joining us today. And I hope you all have a lovely evening. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Take care, everybody. <laughs>